Hello from the Fresno Commodore Users Group. Tonight we'll be looking at CAD-M, which is a computer-assisted design program for the Commodore 64 and Commodore 128 in 64 mode by Mike Milroy. It was included in Lodestar Disk Magazine's issue number 64 and 150. The later version had um, more features, however, a more detailed manual was included in issue number 64. It's controlled by a joystick or a joypad in port number two. And that's how I'll be using it tonight. First, an overview of the screens. It has four menus, and we're in uh, menu number one here. It shows the world box, and the flashing cross in the center is the 3D cursor. It shows you where you're going to be adding points or vertexes. Menu number two has tools for the cursor, uh, tools to create polygons and manipulate them, display tools and view tools. Menu number three has tools to change the colors of the polygons and the background. CAD-M can display four colors at once one for the background and three for the polygons. So let's first uh, create a solid here. So we're going to go and let's make a square. Put point to add a vertex. You notice it goes back to the cursor after you add a point so that you can move the point to a new position. Okay, after we size, put the final point and press enter to enter the polygon. Okay, now let's go to display mode and Change the perspective to zero. That's that gives you an orthographic view where all the lines are parallel to each other. And let's see. I'm going to go into the view menu, view it from the right. Let's see, and uh, we'll turn it into a cube. Um, the cube function here allows you to take it into the third dimension. It's basically the equivalent to extrude in the program Blender. Let's see, we'll enter this. Uh, it can take a little while for the enter command to execute, depending on how many polygons you've got in the scene. Okay, let's go back to the default view. And perspective to one, increasingly I've got a cube, more or less. Okay. See. You can turn it clockwise or counterclockwise. default okay you can also let's go into perspective zero um, manipulate the polygons here let's see now we can drag it You can rotate it with a tip command. Let's see. And duplicate it. This is entirely new vertex. It's not connected to the rest of the cube. I mean, an entirely new polygon, which, if you don't like it, you can delete. 
Let's see. Um, if you go into Um, this mode allows you to select points or vertexes so that you can manipulate the polygons some more. Uh, if you want to deselect it, use the minus command. O only is the tool that you use to select ver vertexes or points. You can select different ones by using the cursor to move the circle. It'll s put point will search for and then select any ver vertexes or points within the circle. Make the polygon active. If you just want to move one point, then you would go to move one and that one vertex. One point. Let's see. Enter. And let's say we want to change the color of this polygon. It's already selected, so we go to. Right now it's on color one. Let's change it to color two. And change color. Let's see. And if we go to display and S fill, notice that polygon is now yellow. Let's see. And you can change the background color as well. U3. Let's see. Um, new color. And let's make the background purple. So you have to move the flashing cursor up to to where it's in line with background or one, two, or three if you want to change one of the polygon colors. Let's make the background uh, purple here. Hit return to get out of this menu. And let's see, suppose you want to add something else to the scene. Let's go back to sketch mode. Let's add a circle. Okay. Oops. That didn't work. Oh. Okay, so I have to turn on the cursor. There we go. You can turn on the cursor with the plus command. Minus will turn off the cursor. Okay. Let's add a circle in the top right corner. Okay. Go to polygon circle. And I'm pressing down to increase or, dis or up to decrease the size. Down increases, up increases. Or, sorry, down increases and up decreases. Let's see, go into a different view, top, and let's see, you can rotate with a tip command. And let's change that color to, let's see, let's make it red. And you have to go down so that you're across from one of the numbers there, one, two, or three. Return, return. Go back to menu two, and change color, or color change, okay, 
And then if you want, you can also glue this one. Cube. Bring it to the third dimension. Takes a while sometimes with, uh, when there are a lot of polygons. Okay, and let's deselect that one. Let's go back into the default view. Magnify it. Okay, and let's see how it looks. I'm going to have it draw the um, outlines there we go so you can see the third dimension a little bit more okay um, let me explain the functions a little bit more well, so I'll give an explanation of the cursor tools. The one I've been using um, here more frequently is O only, and what that allows you to do is select individual points or vertexes with the put point command. Then you can go back into menu two and manipulate that point. Takes a while to process sometimes. Put it wherever you want it. Enter. And the polygon is still active. Back in menu 2. Uh, it also allows you to change the origin uh, T coordinates for true coordinates uh, that puts the origin that is 0, 0, 0 uh, in the center of the world box. F core is false coordinates that allows you to put uh, the origin world box and what that allows you to do uh, it, it makes measuring uh, to build your polygons a bit simpler. Plus turns on the 3D cursor. Uh, o and plus that turns on the O select tool plus the 3D cursor. O only just turns on the O select tool. Minus turns off any selection and turns off the 3D cursor. O only refers to the circle in the world box, which you see flashing there. Center centers the cursor position. Uh, follow allows the O selection tool to follow the edge of a polygon. Exit exits to um, basic, so you can enter basic commands. Uh, exit and clear will return to basic. Drag drags a point or a polygon. Uh, box allows you to create a box. Tip allows you to rotate your polygons. The stretch tool allows you to stretch a polygon horizontally or vertically. All will affect all selected uh, points or vertexes. So you can move that with your move tool, uh, grow, stretch, or drag. Duplicate will duplicate all the vertices creating a, a duplicate polygon. Enclose will enclose an incomplete polygon. Okay, next I've cleared the screen, 
Uh, so we uh, continue to look at menu number two. Uh, next command we have is add point, which allows us to add a point or vertex in uh, the middle of a line. Delete point allows you to delete a selected vertex. Um, delete polygon is what that means. Allows, allows you to delete an entire selected polygon. Uh, these are your three allowable colors for the polygons in your world. Uh, colors one, two, and three, with the asterisk showing which one is selected. Uh, change color, change, changes the color of the selected polygon to the selected color number. One face rotates a polygon so that it is facing the viewer, depending on which way the viewer is seeing it. Two face allows the polygon to be um, visible from both sides. About face flips the direction of the polygon. Sketch gives you the outline of your polygons. Quick fill does a quick fill of the polygons with color. Solid fill fills the polygons with color as well. Outline, when it's selected with the asterisk, uh, will show the outline of the polygons. Boundary shows the world box. Perspective 0, 1, 2, or 3 uh, changes the perspective of the world box. Show shows solid lines for the world box. Dots changes it to dotted lines. And hide hides the world box. And let's go to menu number three and I'm going to load some oh, I'm sorry. Make that the disk menu. And I load some ob some objects from the disks. Okay. So first I'll load the Fresno Commodore user group logo, which I've made here. Okay, and let's magnify this. Okay. And I'm going to slide it over a little bit. I'm pressing Control, Commodore, and the left cursor key. Which um, moves it in smaller increments than if you just use the joypad or joystick. A solid fill. Okay. Okay, so I've loaded the Fresno Commodore Users Group logo that I've made, and we're going to look at uh, different views. Okay, let's go to the default view. Okay, that's in perspective one, perspective mode two, sorry. Um, okay, we'll view it from the left. From the right. This is the top.
under. Back. Notice only the front polygons were different colors and from the front again. Okay. And uh, next, let's try merging it with a different file. First, I'm going to load a new file. Okay, and let's magnify this. Slide it over a bit. Okay, and um, let's put some color in this. Okay. And this file can be merged with any other file that you've got saved. So let's go ahead and do that. Go to the disk menu, merge, and load another file. This is the same file that I had up previously, but you'll notice that the colors will be different. Still merging the file. And the reason the colors are different is because um, CADM can only show four colors at once and it'll use the previously loaded file uh, to define which colors are going to be shown. So let's magnify this a bit. center. Okay, and uh, let's have a look at some of the other files on the disk here. So, um, the disk includes several files uh, that were made uh, back in the 80s, presumably. Uh, so let's load one of them. Okay, um, let's look at a house. Take this, of course. Let's see, menu two and let's load another one here. So, 
this one in. This is a hot rod. It's a muscle car with a blown engine. That's the bottom view. It takes a while to process some of the commands depending on how many polygons are in the model. Let's see. Let's load one more here. Um, We have a spider. Let's change the perspective here. Perspective three. And rotate it. As I said, it takes a while to process, sometimes depending on how many polygons are in the model. Okay. Um, let's go to the disk menu. Okay, I think what I'd like to do is um, show a file that uh, includes some animation. So let's go out here and go exit and clear. Okay. Load the directory. Okay. I'm going to load display logo. Okay, and let's run that. This is a little demo that was included uh, in the disk originally. And you can enter basic commands if you like. You can also include the objects that you make in your own basic program. Okay, so we set up an ultimate 64 here at 48 megahertz speed. So let's see how CADM runs in this mode. Okay. First we'll add some points. The navigation feels pretty normal. But it's not too fast to be able to do things accurately. 
let's see. And uh, let's go to the top view. Here's the tip function. Tip or rotate around a vertex. The cube function. Okay. And uh, change color to three. Let's magnify it. Slide, right, enter the polygon. So far, we're not having any problem with uh, the program running too fast to be able to use it. Let's try rotating it. But it rotates much faster. Now, let's try it. Filled polygon, a filled solid shape. Sorry, that works very nicely. Okay, well, um, I think this is very usable in an accelerated mode. Uh, it speeds up the processing of the things that you wanted to. Uh, and doesn't make navigation too fast to be able to use. Uh, yeah, I think this is very doable in this mode. Okay, let's try loading the Fresno Commodore User Group logo again. and fast. Pretty nice. Let's go to the default view. And let's try it with filled polygons. A little bit slower, but still plenty fast enough for this program. mode. Let's see how easy it is to select a single vertex or point and manipulate it. Okay. Move one. No problem there. Well, so far I'm very impressed. It works very well under this acceleration. Again, 48 megahertz on the Ultimate 64. In CAD M, the command names are a bit cryptic at times, but the manual included in Lodestar number 64 explains them quite nicely. Uh, I think it compares pretty well with uh, other period um, 3D software programs. Uh, GigaCAD, for instance, uh, has more capabilities, but is a bit less intuitive, I think. Um, it does not have, GigaCAD does not have color, but uh, CAD-M does. Uh, CAD-M does not have shading, whereas GigaCAD does. Uh, it would be nice if uh, it had some sort of undo, but um, it's understandable why, because there just isn't much memory to be able to 
um, save that many steps in CAD M. Uh, of course, it would be nice if it had more features of the later software programs, such as uh, I mean, later software such as Blender. But uh, you know, since that was several years in the future, um, it's understandable why it doesn't. Uh, overall, I think it's very impressive and a very nice piece of work. Well, I hope you found that interesting. This is Roger Van Pelt for the Fresno Commodore Users Group. Have a good time at the Commodore Show. The Commodore Los Angeles Super Show.